welcome again in this uh, short uh, presentation. We'll talk about uh, submucosal tumors. Submucosal tumors, by definition, uh, is any bulge uh, from the GI wall, whether in the esophagus, stomach, uh, duodenum, or rectum, and so on. Any bulge covered by normal mucosa. So submucosal tumors arise from a layer deeper than the mucosa. Uh, so they may arise from the uh, muscularis uh, mucosa, from the uh, submucosa, or from the muscularis propria. Uh, this is a normal uh, GI wall from the esophagus to the rectum by the radial echoendoscope, and here we can, uh, we can identify five layers, three hyperechoic layers and two hypoechoic layers, two muscular hypoechoic layers in between. The innermost layer is the is a, a mucosa hyperechoic. The second layer is a muscularis mucosa hypo. The third layer is a submucosa hyper. The fourth layer is a muscularis propria hypo. And the fourth layer, uh, the fifth layer is a uh, adventitia or cirrhosis. So it is mucosa, muscularis mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria, the fourth layer, and the fifth is adventitia. Uh, or cirrhosis. So submucosal tumor is a tumor arising deeper to the mucosa, so it may arise from the muscularis mucosa, the second layer, submucosa, third layer, muscularis propria, fourth layer, or the adventitia or cirrhosis, which is the fifth layer. The US is very accurate in uh, the diagnosis of submucosal tumor. The sensitivity is 100%, so it, uh, it usually do not miss any submucosal tumor. Uh, specificity is high, is about 90% is can, it can specifically diagnose the type of submucosal tumor. To diagnose the type of submucosal tumor, uh, we should stress in two important points. The most important is the layer of origin. And the second point is the echogenicity of the lesion, whether it is hypoechoic or hyperechoic. The commonest is the gastrointestinal stromal sick tumor. And of course, with leomyoma and schwannoma, that the commonest is gastrointestinal stromal cell tumor. Uh, both three tumors uh, most commonly originate from the uh, fourth muscular sprocheria. They are muscular tumors, they originate from a muscle layer, whether the fourth layer, which is the most common, about 90% of this tumor arise from the fourth layer, muscular sprocheria, uh, but they may arise from the second layer which is the muscularis mucosa and they are usually hypoechoic or hyperechoic they may be hypo or hyperechoic with areas of breakdown and some vascularity so they are uh, commonly bleeding and presented as hematemesis another submucosal tumor is lipoma it is always located in the submucosa the third layer and they are usually hyperechoic so a hyperechoic layer in the submucosa the third layer so we should think of lipoma Duplication cyst is a cyst, congenital anomaly, segregation of a part of the wall of the, of the gut inside, inside the wall of the uh, esophagus or the stomach and so on. So it is isolated or segregated, segregated part of the, uh, of the GI, uh, segregated inside the wall of the esophagus or the stomach. Uh, they commonly uh, originating in the third layer, submucosa, or the fourth layer, and they are anechoic. They are anechoic, like cyst. So it's cyst, so it is anechoic, it is black, jet black, and of course, avascular. No vascular activity at all. Carcinoid tumor, uh, most commonly originating or uh, located. Uh, in the submucosa, which is the third layer, and usually hypoechoic, but may be hyperechoic. <coughs> they rarely originate from other layers, the most, but the most common layer of origin is the submucosa. Pancreatic rest, commonly originating from the muscularis mucosa or submucosa, and they are usually hypoechoic, and we may identify a duct like structure inside, and gastric viruses always. Uh, uh, located in the submucosa in the third layer and of course they are cystic and you call it jet black with no vascular uh, sorry with uh, high vascular activity uh, inside venous venous uh, uh, color flow signal okay so let us have some uh, examples of the submucosal tumor this is a common submucosal tumor which is uh, the gist tumor it is bulging bulge in the mucosa covered by 
bulging of the stomach covered by a totally normal uh, mucosa. This is located in the gastric body, in the lesser uh, curvature, because this is a greater curvature with marked regime. And here, very nicely seen uh, mass originating from the fourth muscularis propria layer. If we count the layer, the innermost is the hyperopoic mucosa, then the hypoopoic muscularis mucosa, then the hyperopoic submucosa, then the hypoopoic muscularis propria. If we follow this layer, the muscularis propria, we can clearly see uh, that this mass originating from this layer, which is the muscularis propria, the fourth layer. So, a uh, uh, tumor originating from the muscular uh, fourth layer, which is the muscularis propria. So, the most probable diagnosis is uh, gastrointestinal stromal cell gene. This is another example of a large uh, gist uh, from the uh, so uh, sorry, there is a small gist from the from the stomach. Yes, if here very nicely see that it is originating from the fourth layer. If we count the layers again, this is hyperechoic mucosa, hypoechoic muscularis mucosa, hyperechoic submucosa, and this is a hypoechoic muscularis propria layer. And here uh, it is clearly seen that the, this tumor originating from the fourth muscularis propria layer. So the most probable diagnosis is uh, uh, gastrointestinal stromal cell tumor. And this is the liver. It is indenting the liver, but it is not originating from the liver. It is originating from the muscularis uh, propria layer of the uh, wall of the stomach and indenting the left lobe of the liver. Uh, this is another small gastrointestinal stromal cell tumor. The, yes, yes, this small lesion. And it is clearly, yes, very nice. Here, this is a, a trick here. Uh, someone may say that the muscularis propria layer, this is the fourth layer. Yes, this is the fourth layer, which is the muscularis propria layer, is seen uh, clearly behind the mass. So it is not originated from this layer. Yes. But this layer is the longitudinal part of the muscularis propria. It is not the whole muscularis propria. And this is the circular, this is the circular uh, muscle layer of the muscularis propria. Muscularis propria formed of two layers, circular muscle layer, inner circular muscle, and outer longitudinal muscle, and in between there is a, a fibrous strands. So in some Japanese uh, uh, classification of the GI wall, they can spy the wall as seven or eight uh, or, or may even eleven layer. Why? Because the muscularis propria layer is not one layer. Uh, very high resolution may demonstrate that it's formed of circular muscle layer from which the tumor arises and a fibrous strand here uh, and uh, another layer which is an longitudinal muscle layer. Why I am saying that? Because the muscularis mucosa is away. If we count the layers here, this is clearly seen the mucosa or the interface between the echoendoscope and the mucosa. And this is the muscularis mucosa. This is the muscularis mucosa, which is the second layer. And this whitish layer is the submucosa. Yes. And this layer is the muscularis propria layer from which the tumor arises. Here, the longitudinal. Mus muscle part of the muscularis propria, and here this is the circular muscle part of the muscularis propria. So it is a very small gist uh, originating from the uh, fourth muscularis propria layer, particularly from its circular uh, muscle fiber part. This is uh, an example of a very large esophageal leiomyoma. Leiomyoma also originating from the fourth muscularis propria layer almost always, but may originate also from the second muscularis mucosa. It is originating from a muscle layer exactly like this and like uh, schwannoma or uh, granular cell tumor or apparently soft tumor. This is a free synony synonym of uh, the same tumor. Uh, interestingly, uh, GIST very rarely occur in the esophagus. Uh, very, very exceptionally, very, very, very rare to originate from the esophagus. The commonest muscular uh, tumor of the esophagus is the uh, leiomyoma. 
and it usually originating from the fourth muscularis proprio layer and schwannoma or a precursor or a granular cell tumor. This is a muscular tumor, but originating from the more commonly from the muscularis mucosa. So, GIST is very rare in the esophagus. If I find a submucosal mass from a muscle layer in the esophagus, then it is, it is almost always not GIST tumor. It may be a leomyoma, and leomyoma is usually originating from the fourth layer, the muscularis propria layer, or a precursor or granular or schwannoma, the same tumor, usually originating 80% from the muscularis mucosa from the second layer. But here, this is a very large tumor. This is the heart, part of the heart. And this is the, uh, uh, this is a very part, I think, of the left atrium. And this is a very large, very, very large, if you find most of the esophagus. And here, uh, we can see clearly that it arises from the muscularis propria layer. Uh, we can see the layer of origin from the edges of the mass. If you have a, a mass, uh, 10 centimeter or 5 centimeter or 8 centimeter uh, and I'd like to say the layer of origin I can see it clearly from its upper edge or lower edge not from its middle so it is the upper edge of the mass we can count the layers very clearly this is the mucosa yes we can count the layers from the lower edge here from the lower edge yes sorry from the lower edge we can count the layers from the upper or the lower edge yes here from the middle I can't uh, know the layer of origin but from the upper aspect or from the lower aspect I can uh, see clearly yes very nicely this is the first layer which is the mucosa and the second layer is the muscularis mucosa and the third layer is the submucosa and the fourth layer is the muscularis propria uh, from which this large mesh originating being in the esophagus so it is not almost all of it is not a yeast, being originated from the fourth layer, so mostly it is a myoma. If it is originating from the muscularis mucosa, the second layer, then it may be a granular cell tumor or uh, other means, uh, schwannoma or uh, apricosov tumor. Okay, uh, this is a case of uh, submucosal tumor in the esophagus. It is hyperechoic, yes, it is hyperechoic. Is clearly hyperechoic, and here I can see the muscularis propria layer passing very nicely behind this large mass. This is the muscularis propria layer passing behind behind this mass. So this mass is not originating from the muscularis propria layer. It is originating from the layer inner to it, which is the submucosa, and it is hyperechoic, having the same picture as the fatty liver. So it is a hyperechoic layer in the uh, submucosa, so it is almost lipoma. It is almost lipoma. So it is an example of a hyperechoic mass in the submucosa, so it is a large esophageal lipoma. This is an example of a carcinoid tumor. This is the endoscopic picture of the carcinoid tumor. It is usually amplicated surface. Uh, says, uh, its surface is usually abrogated and it is uh, located in the, maybe located or mostly located in the stomach or in the duodenum. This is the roof of the duodenum and abrogated. So we should think of carcinoid tumor based on endoscopic picture, endosonographic picture here. Here the differential diagnosis may be a pancreatic crest, especially in the antrum. But the pancreatic crest, it is a volcano like, not surface abrogation. But sometimes it or a gist to its surface uh, necrosis. So sometimes difficult to differentiate between uh, the three tumors. In most cases, you can differentiate, especially uh, pancreatic rest. Uh, so uh, we will go to the echo endoscopic picture. Yes, this is very nicely seen. Yes, this is small mess. And we can count the layers again. Yes, we can count the layers again. This is the small mass. We can count the layer again. This is the first layer, which is hyperechoic, the mucosa. And this is the muscularis mucosa, the second layer. And this is the submucosa. And here, this is the muscularis propria layer. This is the muscularis propria layer. Appearing that this small mass originating from the two layers, the muscularis mucosa and the submucosa. And I think there may be 
uh, it is a hypoechoic. This 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 mass here is hypoechoic. Uh, but calcinoid also may be hyperechoic. So this picture potentiates the diagnosis or uh, augments the diagnosis of uh, sub mucosa or goes with the diagnosis of uh, carcinoid tumor because it is located in the muscularis mucosa and located in the sub uh, mucosa and it is hypoechoic. Uh, this is a, a case of uh, another mass here, yes, it is located in the sub mucosa, yes. And here this is a muscularis propria, and here this is very clear and intact. It is not originated from the muscle layer. And here it is a hyperechoic mass, yes. Located in the submucosa, yes. So maybe a lipoma, hyperechoic mass located in the submucosa. But sometimes carcinoid is a hyperechoic also, and also located in the submucosa. But the endoscopic picture favors the diagnosis of carcinoid syndrome because the mass is unlikely. A uh, biopsy revealed the presence of uh, histopathologically it was believed to be carcinoid tumor. So we should combine both endoscopic and endosonographic picture. And if there is a doubt or very difficult to differentiate, then we should uh, take a biopsy, uh, whether endoscopic normal endoscopic biopsy with biopsy over biopsy technique or uh, AUS FMA. This is another tumor of the, uh, this is another uh, submucosal tumor, which is a duplication cyst. Uh, it is a uh, fulfilled uh, definition of uh, submucosal tumor, which is a bulge uh, uh, covered with uh, totally intact mucosa. This is an esophageal one, and here this is a duodenal one. This is a now in the bulb of the duodenum, and this is the second part, and here there is a very clear bulge. When I see it to the first time, I, uh, I, I think of uh, gist tumor in the duodenum. I think of gist tumor of the duodenum, it is a bulge, but it may be anything. It may be any, anything. It may be a gist, it may be a lipoma, uh, or it may be a duplication cyst, or maybe compression from outside even. Let us see the echoendoscopic picture. Yes, it is very nicely seen uh, cyst. It is an echoic jet black. This is a reverberation. This is a physics. It is uh, something in the physics reflects some echoes, but it is not. It is not soft tissue shadow. This is reverberation because when uh, the see the video, this will uh, disappear with the creasings again uh, of the of the picture. And here we can see clearly the muscularis propria. So this lesion lies in the submucosa, and it is a cyst, and we call it. Why it is a cyst? Because there is posterior enhancement. Or if we look to the rectangle behind this lesion, it is hyperechoic, more hyperechoic than uh, the other side, and here the other side. So this hyperechoic triangle, which is called posterior enhancement, denotes that uh, this uh, phase is fluid because there is posterior enhancement behind a fluid and, of course, posterior shadowing behind a stone. So, this is a cystic, a cyst, well-defined wall, posterior enhancement, and echoic, no vascularity at all, and located in the submucosa, so we should think of duplication cyst. Yes, yes, this is located in the submucosa, and this is very well-defined posterior enhancement and no vascularity at all, so uh, it is a duplication cyst, and this patient managed by a uh, needle knife uh, incision, and uh, come, the fluid comes, a very viscid fluid, usually contains uh, mucine, uh, it is stains positive by uh, uh, alcian blue or uh, periodic acid chitinase or mucicarmine, it contains mucine because this is a part of the GI segregated inside the wall of the duodenum, so it contains goblet cells and uh, uh, mucine secreting cells, so there is mucine inside, and uh, this one of the characteristic of uh, duplication cyst. And it is managed by a needle knife incision with a complete disappearance. The patient was complaining of some 
dyspepsia uh, because it is uh, producing narrowing of the room, but after middle night incision, the patient improved markedly. This another form of submucosal tumor. This is, we are now in the bulb of the duodenum, and this is the second part of the duodenum, and uh, the patient appears that he is bleeding, and this is the major papilla. And deeper to the major papilla, we can see two uh, punch-like or two cystic structures. Of course, with the bleeding, we can uh, think of uh, duodenal, the rare, the rare duodenal viruses, but also this tumor is the bleeding, the, the bleeding tumor because it is uh, show some vascularity and uh, if there is surface ulceration uh, with exposure of the underlying uh, arteriole or something like that it may may present by horrible bleeding uh, just tumors this tumor may present by horrible bleeding uh, this patient has segmental portal hypertension and these are uh, uh, the renal viruses sometimes it is very clear to diagnose gastric viruses or duodenal uh, viruses, but sometimes it is difficult, uh, especially if it is in the form of it is a linear or tubular and it appears as exaggerated gastric or pandal holes. So the patient has total uh, uh, hypertension and uh, recurrent hematemesis, and uh, by upper endoscopy, we can see these uh, lesions, I see exaggerated uh, gastric uh, folds. And uh, we are confused whether they are gastric folds or they are viruses, so we can uh, we can uh, apply endoscopic ultrasound. Actually, in 70 to 80 percent, we can diagnose viruses, but in 10 about in about 10 to 20 percent, sometimes it is very difficult to differentiate exaggerated gastric folds from linear gastric viruses, and just from uh, and just from. Uh, some uh, just from duodenal uh, or gastric viruses, especially uh, if uh, with bleeding. Uh, sometimes we are, some of uh, colleagues inject histoacryl, and finally it may uh, prove to be just a tumor. Uh, so here we can differentiate. We can differentiate uh, viruses very easy. Uh, by applying Doppler very nicely seen, we are giving a penis color flow signal inside, penis color flow signal inside, and here these are viruses and these are extra gastric collaterals. Why? Because this is the muscularis propria, this is the muscularis propria, and this is the echondoscope, and this is the wall. So, uh, this lesion lies inner to the muscularis propria, so it lies in the submucosa, so it is a, a gastric viruses. Whether this is outside the muscularis propria, so these lesions, uh, are these uh, collaterals or these channels are uh, extra uh, gastric collaterals due to portal hypertension. If we find a vessel or a vascular channel communicating uh, the extravascular collaterals and piercing the muscularis uh, propria and communicating with the viruses, then it is a perforator. Perforator is a channel communicating these both lesions, piercing the muscularis propria layer and communicating the gastric viruses with the extra gastric collaterals. So this is very nicely seen muscularis propria layer, viruses, extra gastric collaterals. And this is another form. Uh, what I just saying, the linear, linear gastric viruses. This is the muscularis propria layer here, and this is inner the muscularis propria. So this is viruses, and this is extra vascular collaterals, and there may be here a perforator communicating both. Yes, yes, communicating, communicating. Yes, yes, there may be communicating here. Also, this may be a perforator. But this is viruses in a through the muscularis propria layer, and this is extra vascular. Yes, this is a perforated tube. It is communicating the extra vascular collaterals, yes, with the viruses. So this is a perforator, and this is a cause of recurrent bleeding after injection. Okay, lastly, extra neural compression may simulate submucosal tumor. Extra neural compression may occur by any lesion. Uh, to the gold bladder can compress the antral area uh, at 9 o'clock. The spleen may compress the fundal area 
just beside the retroflexive uh, upper endoscope. Uh, any uh, hepatic lesion can compress the, the stomach and produce in bulge exactly like other submucosal tumor like this or uh, leomyoma or lipoma. Here it is very easy to differentiate by uh, endoscopic ultrasound. You notice here that uh, five layers are intact. And here, this is a gold bladder with a large stone here. And here, the thickened wall, and this is a large stone. But here, the five layers are intact. This is a mucosa, hyperopoic mucosa, hypoopoic muscularis mucosa, hyperopoic submucosa, hypoopoic muscularis propria, and the hyperopoic uh, serosa. And this is next to these five layers, very well differentiated, intact. Uh, next to them, there is a stone inside the good bladder. So this good bladder may compress the anterior lesion and produce anterior bulge like other submucosal tubes. Here endoscopic ultrasound is very, very, very easy to differentiate. If you find this picture, a bulge in the antrum from the good bladder, we can do some tricks. We can keep inflating air and stay for some time. This bulge may decrease when the stomach is uh, inflated, so it will push the, the good bladder away, so the bulge will decrease in size, so this is compression from outside, and this anatomical lesion is usually due to the good bladder and good bladder stones. This is another trick, uh, so we can uh, need, uh, so we do not need endoscopic ultrasound, but sometimes this may deceive, may be deceiving, uh, but here endoscopic ultrasound can differentiate it. Uh, very well. This is five layers, very nicely seen, and this is a good bladder, and this is a stone inside the good bladder, and this is a good bladder septum or content of the wall. Okay, and thanks for your attention.